So as you touch on community, that is something that I believe so much in is, is empowering our youth to be the best version of themselves. However, when I say that, it's important to help guide them, mentor them, and be there to help them identify those qualities that they naturally have and empower them to be able to make an impact in the community. Welcome back, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to this edition of Leading Through Unprecedented Times. I'm Tom Murray, your host, and I am ecstatic for this episode today. I can't wait to introduce you to the one and only worldwide known Lindsay Tarpley. Lindsay, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I was so excited to get the invite. <laughs> Lindsay, I got to tell you, I'm looking at your website and I see two-time Olympic gold medalist, ESPN Rise Player of the Decade, uh, NCAA National Player of the Year, 125 matches with the U.S. Women's National Team. I got to say, first, I'm actually feeling pretty bad about myself, firstly, because I look at that and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at these credentials. Look at that that the background, all of that. Oh my gosh. So first of all, thanks for your time. I appreciate you, my friend. It is well, good thanks. to see you. And thanks for saying all those awards. Absolutely. <laughs> my gosh. I'm looking, I got to go update my website because it's. Uh, I don't have anything like that on there. I'll tell you. So um, awesome. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. You know, our audience with school and district leaders, I'm so excited for them to get to know you if they don't, or if they haven't seen you on TV and just to get to know a little bit about you, your story. So just start a little bit with your intro, your story, just what brings you here, and then uh, we're going to dive into the connections for school and district leaders. Well, I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering if that's really a city, and it is. It's in Southwest Michigan, and I was very fortunate to be from a wonderful community and grew up in the youth national team soccer system. And when I say that, it was when I was 12 years old, I was identified as a player for the future. So I started traveling on my own out to San Diego, Las, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Arizona, when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, competing for the youth national team rosters. And I did that up until I went to the University of North Carolina, played for the legendary coach Anson Dorrance. And at that point in my life, I was screened to be potential for the senior women's national team. So my freshman year as a Tar Heel, I was actually trying out for the senior women's national team. At North Carolina, I loved every minute of, of being there representing the Tar Heels. We won a national championship. I was voted player of the year. And some of my um, incredible memories are even off the field things there. So that really helped shape me into who I am today. I was fortunate to be on the 2004 and 2008 Olympic rosters, and we won the gold medal, which was a dream come true, and played in a World Cup in 2007. And after that, I ended up having a massive knee injury in 2011, and it really propelled me into, I have two beautiful children, but now into the speaking world. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businesswoman. And I really enjoy being able to use the experiences that I was very fortunate to have and now speak about the impact that they've all made on my life. So that is my story in a very small nutshell without um, going into too much detail. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And having known you for quite a while, you're amazingly humble as well. When I start to to look at some of those accolades and uh, wow, just I have to ask and people must be wondering, you know, it's not every day people get to interact with an Olympic athlete, somebody that's won a gold. Just just talk to us a little about that experience and, and winning a gold medal, what it's like showing up in a different country, half a world away. And just I uh, would love to hear you reflect for just a moment, because it's one of the first things I wonder is like, what is that experience like? It's such a great question. And, and the reason I like that question so much is because you would expect me to say, standing on the podium, having the gold medal put around my neck, which don't get me wrong, it was an incredible experience, but it was really about the journey and the highs and the lows day after day and being able to, to navigate a path to that pinnacle of success. Um, and that's, again, why I enjoy talking about it is because not many people think about everything that goes before it. 
the world sees that one moment of the metal being put around your neck, but rarely do does everyone know the things that go into having that moment actually be accomplished. Yeah. And you know, the connection, you get to speak to school and district leaders, educators all across the, the world, truly. And the connection to what you're saying to school and district leaders being, I think about how many just countless hours they put in where they're the only car in the parking lot. They're there early and it's dark. They leave late and it's dark. And that's where the difference is made and part of that journey. It's not just that end of the year graduation ceremony where they're standing up giving that speech, but just truly the hundreds of thousands of hours that go into that. You know, um, you know the connections of school and district leaders and, uh, and, and even around coaching. And I, I want to really dive into there's so many parallels between the world of sports, your world, the skills that are learned on the field, the connections to the skills around life, the skills around coaching. I also know how having been at this for a while, that there's a lot of our, our, our folks listening, our school and district leaders that probably were coaches themselves, whether it was at Little League or, or girls soccer or whatever, might, maybe the varsity level that turned into a principal that became a superintendent, whatever it might be, because there's so many cross connections. And it's the reason we wanted to bring you on the podcast. There's so many connections between your world operating at that level with what they're doing in high schools or middle schools or at the district office each and every day and some of those skills. So let's dive into a little bit, compare some of the skills that that you you see on the soccer fields, you know, or other ball fields as well, that will transition for school and district leaders into their world and why there's so many similarities there. There are so, so so many similarities. And I, when I look at my playing days, I learned so many important qualities and I had experiences that really shaped me into who I was. And now I, I coach Uh, But to me, coaching and teaching are the same thing. You have an opportunity to make an impact on a young person. And with that impact, you can be a role model. You can be someone who really helps that kid become an incredible adult. And that's, I always appreciate that investment, but I see it as an opportunity, an opportunity that I've earned because I've put so much time into my craft and was fortunate to have the success But it's important to hear the stories of the hard times along the way as well, because it's not always easy. And when when you're coaching or you're teaching or you're playing, you have to draw on those qualities that make you unique. And it's important to be able to identify those qualities so when times get tough, you know where to go. Yeah, I love that. One of the things I'm thinking about is, um, you know, I can't imagine what it's like being in a stadium with, you know, 100,000 plus people, whatever it might be in those numbers, yelling, you know, taunting, yelling, you know, just awful mean things at you. And I'm connecting that to school and district leaders. And it looks different, but sometimes they might feel like it's the exact same way when something doesn't work in their favor or they make a decision that falls flat, or maybe they make a decision that's the right decision, but people don't agree with it. And people are jarring from the outside, you know, like whether they, it's hits on social media, emails. And so one of the things I'd love for you to reflect on, because, you know, we pointed out those Olympic golds, the, the height of it all, but there was also seasons that I'm sure you didn't get there or, you know, the, the, the crowd did um, <clears throat> make some comments, or whatever, you didn't win the game, whatever it looks like. How do you pick yourself back up in those moments to continue to forward when it feels like the world might be against you? Because I think our principals and superintendents can probably relate to that. Absolutely. I, I love to call those character building moments when things are so low that you're questioning, what am I doing? Where am I going? And those are the moments where you have a decision to make. You know, you, you either throw the towel in and that's it, or you dig a little bit deeper and you realize that you can overcome those things. You just have to have that strong base and that strong belief in yourself. I remember when I was 19 years old and we were playing a match in Mexico City. And during the match, it was a 0-0 game. There was concession garbage being thrown at us from the stands. And, it, you know, I'm, an, I'm a naive 19-year-old girl not understanding what was happening, but it was the best thing possible because in that moment, I learned to overcome all of those outside influences. And it taught me by being in that environment, I was able to learn on the fly that you have to shut everything out and you have to stay focused on that one goal. And we ended up winning that game 1-0. And it sticks in my head because I could have completely shut off during that game. But I had this resilience and resiliency inside of me that really pushed me forward. And 
it was one of the best character defining moments that I had as a young person. That's amazing. And speaking of one nothing or speaking of goals, I believe you hold some records or in some record books. Are you not? Correct me if I'm wrong. Like one of the are you top 10 like ever in female uh, in women's soccer. Am I something, something like that? Am I wrong? I, I'm not sure on that one. But yes, I, I did love to score goals. That was something <laughs> that I always enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, like I said, your humility comes through there as well. And so thank you for, for sharing that. You know, one of the things that I've loved really watching from you as we've connected on social media in recent years is your value around community. You know, you're somebody that you didn't walk off those fields and stop. Your value and community of, you know, you're building community within your community. And it's something that our, our school and district leaders, it's just such an important part of the work. You know, if future ready in our framework for school and district leaders. We talk about community partnerships, but you know, a soccer team is not that committee of one. You can be the greatest player in the world, but if you're one of what, 11 and the other 10 or you're not playing as a team, you don't have that community. They don't also have the skills. That's just like a, a leader in, in a building. It's just like a principal. It's, it can't just be about them. They can be an amazing principal, but they need to empower their teachers, work alongside their teachers, build community with their teachers. So the connection, I think, between the soccer field and community and all of those pieces is very, very similar to the sports connections to community and building community within the team, the teamwork and all those different aspects. So talk to us a little bit about and talk to school and district leaders about the importance of community, because I think there's a direct parallel there. Yes. After I was done playing, I did get into the coaching world. And one of my passions is running an academy in my hometown. And my husband and I actually started this uh, just two years ago. And we value being able to be a platform for a lot of other entities to come in and help educate these these young budding soccer players, but not just on soccer, but on the importance of life skills. So we focus on mental preparation, physical preparation, a nutritionist, making sure they understand qualities that it's gonna take to be a leader of themselves, but also in their community. So as you touch on community, that is something that I believe so much in is, is empowering our youth to be the best version of themselves. However, when I say that, it's important to help guide them, mentor them, and be there to help them identify those qualities that they naturally have and empower them to be able to make an impact in the community. Yeah. One of the things that I, I love that, I love the connection, the community and team there, you know, and I'm reflecting on uh, what something you said earlier about coaching, you know, coaching the community because uh, our school and district leaders often find themselves building community, but simultaneously coaching those that may not be where they need them to be. You know, that supervision side uh, can be a challenge when they have somebody that they're, they're coaching and there's so many connections there as well. And I'd love to you to reflect on, you know, what advice do you have for school and district leaders that are, are coaching somebody that's maybe struggling for whatever reason? What does that look like on the soccer field when you're coaching folks? Sometimes it's a lack of skill and we're trying to develop some of those skills, just like in the classroom. Uh, sometimes it could be an attitude thing, right? Where we're kind of uh, bringing out the uh, the sides that we really need to, to be a team player and not all about self. And sometimes we need to see that in the classroom as well. So I'd love for you to dive. I know you touched on a little bit at the beginning, but a little deeper into the, the connection with coaching and how you might handle some of those on the field. But but lessons our school and district leaders might be able to take away as well. Yes, I learned so much from being on a soccer team from a very young age. I played multiple sports growing up, but for me, it was always about being on a team that was bigger than myself. And so it's important to understand the individual qualities that I naturally had, but in, and I was able to tap into those and refine them and, and make sure I was constantly developing new ones. But at the same time, I was also focused on how to be a good teammate. And what's interesting now is I spent so much of my youth and my professional days being on this team and be playing my critical role in order for the team to, to be successful. But now I'm using those in the business world. And so when you think about um, district leaders and teachers and the impact that they have on an individual, I see it in a very similar light. I, for example, I'm coaching my daughter who's eight years old. And for me, I'm teaching them about soccer, but it goes way beyond just soccer skills for me. It is about how to be a good teammate. What does that take? How do you speak to your teammates? The tone that you use, um, you know, letting them understand that when they say something, they can't take it back. All of these lessons that to me 
go way further than sports. It's an opportunity to use sport in order to teach these valuable life lessons. Yeah, I love that. Such great connection to community. Um, also, just the, the, the coaching side and all those different pieces. You know, as I'm, I'm reflecting on what you said, I'm thinking about just work on the soccer field, the connection to now being a business leader in, in, the, in the field there as well. Any other connections you'd make for our school and district leaders? You know, the, the teammate side, the coaching side is certainly there. Um, any other connections you'd make for school and district leaders on advice that you have just from your lessons learned, um, that the notion of failing forward and picking ourselves up? Uh, there's so many of those connections. Any other pieces or connections you want to make for them? That's, that's a very deep question because I could I could answer this one for a long time. I would say one of the best things that I learned in throughout my school days into my professional career was using my mistakes to make myself better for the next opportunity. And when I say that, you know, sometimes when kids fail, it's hard, it's hard to see, but it's also a learning moment and an opportunity to help educate, guide, and teach them on the best way to move forward after that. And if I look over the course of my career, every high in my career has come with a, with a very, very low, low beforehand, but People don't talk about that a lot. So before I won the gold medal in 2004, I was cut from that, that World Cup roster just nine months prior to that. So again, everything goes through highs and lows and finding that middle road and making sure that kids know it's okay to not have success. It's okay, but you have to roll your sleeves up and figure out a way to make sure that it doesn't happen again and again. Oh, I love that. I love the connection to that. I didn't know that about you. I mean, you're incredibly humble in that work, and but it shows as you work through that and you continue and then look what happens from that. It's like the principal that doesn't get their first interview, doesn't get it, but then finds out I wasn't meant to get that position because I was meant to be over here in the position that I'm in. And I think there's a lot of connections and relevance there as well. So if, if school or district leaders want to reach out, bring in to speak, connect with folk, connect with your kids, that kind of thing, what's the best way they, they can connect with you? Oh, anyway, social media. I'm Lindsay Tarpley5 at Instagram, Lindsay Tarpley on Twitter, um, my email. I'll share all of that info with you. But it's it's nice to be able to make these parallels and connection because there's so many similarities between what I've done as a professional soccer player and now as a mom and, a, and an entrepreneur to what school leaders, district leaders that they're doing to empower and engage our youth as well. Absolutely love it and love the parallels. So let me ask one final question as we wrap up here, whether it's a, a teacher that's about to start their first year or just finish their first year, or it's a superintendent that's been leading the way for a long time. What's just one piece of advice from your heart that you have from those that are working with kids each and every day, they're working hard every single day, just one piece of advice, no matter what sort of continuum they're on. Great question. Again, you're bringing them today. I would say be true to yourself. And it's easy to say it, it's hard to do it, especially when times are tough or you're dealing with um, a difficult situation. But it is really important to just know who you are, know your beliefs, know your strengths, know areas that you can always fall back on. But really being true to who you are and who you're meant to be is, is important in order to have success. Mm. Brilliantly said. Absolutely. My friend, it's been so great to see you. That is Lindsay Tarpley, everyone, all world athlete, incredible coach, mom, family lady, and all of it. Lindsay, it's been so awesome. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. It's been, it's been wonderful. Mm -hmm.